The story of K Flock. Let's see. 432 days have passed since K Flock surrendered himself to detectives for a murder that happened still on December 16th. Still up it. He's a fashion. Is still up it. Whatever they call it. While walking with his sister and her friend down 151st in Amsterdam, he crossed paths with another gang member who spotted him from inside of a barber shop. Words were exchanged. You should stay inside, man. And now you got killed for no reason. And just moments later, the man who was identified as Oscar Hernandez died from bullets to the neck and chest. God damn. After 911. I didn't see it. That's so fast. Shop. Words were exchanged, and just Look, moments later, this, the man this is who was identified as Oscar Hernandez died from bullets to the neck pop, pop. and chest. Like, hey. After 911 calls came pouring in, pop, pop. investigators quickly identified K Flock in his $4,000 outfit. As Wait, the is he the gun? He then it? issued a warrant for his arrest on first degree. His $4,000 outfit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This nigga not 911 playing. 911 calls <laughs> came pouring in, investigators Yo. quickly identified K Flock. Is he the gun? Wait, his sister. One of them is the sister, I don't know. His $4,000 outfit is the main suspect. They then issued a warrant for his arrest on first degree murder charges on December 23rd. And without question, he self admitted. He was only 18 years old at the time. God damn. Three days later, his lawyer would release a statement claiming the shooting was gay. What you doing, gay gay? walked out to confront him. It's all on video. When the guy hits the ground, he's got a loaded gun that was in his pocket that his hand was on at the time. We consider that to be self-defense. The surveillance footage that was released seemed to strongly back this up, seeing that he was the one who was approached and then threatened. Now, though his court date would continuously be delayed well, the entire 2000 year. He prefer go to jail than die, what the fuck? Like, it was about to kill him, so he popped you first. What will you do? He prefer go to jail or in a mug or funeral? Not for now, which... Nah, he not playing. It was likely he was going to beat the case and be released Son in a matter of time. But the feds had other plans, and they want anything but to see K-Flock back on the streets of the Bronx. On February 23rd, 2023, the federal government stormed in and added a 15-page indictment on K-Flock. A.K.A. K.K. That's a lot of name. Kevin Perez, A.K.A. K-Flock, A.K.A. K, A.K.A. K.K. Oh, shit and seven others now being labeled the leader of an organized crime syndicate the so new york federal names. court is demanding that the 19 year old rapper serve a minimum of life in prison uh. or a maximum of the death penalty video of a suspect wanted in a deadly shooting in harlem the incident took place yesterday morning on one yeah, the regular call we're gonna have to the south and volley exactly. you're gonna put him in a truck and bring him to the block this nigga not care they're gonna come to win Yo, <laughs> guy not playing. Before he was ever known as K Flock, he was just Kevin Perez, born April 20th, 2000, New York. Although the Bronx is the birthplace of hip hop music, 40% of the borough lives below the poverty line, making it a hub for crime and gang activity. Unfortunately, he was no exception to that growing up in this environment. His mom says he tried to play sports, boxing, and was also into fashion, but she never expected him to become well, a rapper. Well, he's still up it. I wanted to actually do clothing designs and stuff like that. Okay. I had him in boxing, because that's what we do. Things like that, but never nothing of music, ever. School never interested him either. He already had an early mindset Some of getting out killer on the face, street, and he did so with the hustle <laughs> of someone twice his age. At just 10 years old, he had already been outside hanging on the block. Uh, K Flock took note of what other rappers were doing at the time in Chicago. Because while he was growing up in the Bronx, the Chicago drill scene was starting to take over. Although young, in his mind, he was old enough to start hustling and meeting new people in the neighborhood. Even though K Flock was good at making enemies, he was even better at making friends. Aww. Uh. Aaron Howard or Dougie B is actually his blood cousin, but the two grew up like good friends. Then there was Quayshawn or B-Love as we know him. He was the oldest and had a lot of influence over them, including being the first one to pick up rapping. And lastly, there was also Jalen, known as PMVJ, who at one point was their friend. Needless to so say, B-Love had already been in the streets and he had some connections and was already making a name for himself. 
To them, the streets were too much fun. This was their mindset at a young age. Being young and not fully understanding the lifestyle that came with it, losing family and friends was part of growing up in the Bronx. Being from 187th Street, K-Flock repped a gang called Sevside in DOA, and like any set, they were at war with a few others. Sometimes they even referred to themselves as EBK or everybody killers. How you EBK? Because anybody could get shot. So you can imagine they had a lot of enemies, with the YGs and OGs <laughs> being the main ops of Southside. As I mentioned, B Love was the first one to start recording music, but he didn't like the way his songs were coming out, so he ended up giving it up for a while and never released the songs. Meanwhile, PMVJ would actually be the first one to find some success with songs like OMBK. Seeing that PMVJ could get views like that only made them realize they could do it as well, seeing they all come from the same area. Shortly after, B-Love ended up doing some time behind bars, later claiming that someone had snitched on him. This made him hate the street politics, wanting right. to pursue music more so he could leave that behind. But while this was happening, K-Flock was running his ops down in the streets and would even go live on Instagram, showing him in hoods he wasn't supposed to be in like he was bulletproof. I make it known when I'm on his side. Look, came from there, boys down there, look, boys still down there. Boys still down there. Although negative, this attention would actually put his name out there so his reputation was quickly building. Gangster. In just a few months, Flocka had made a few hundred fans that would watch his streams where he taunted his enemies. The idea of making music still wasn't on his mind though. The it's 200 fans, but one of them's are the apps. They, <laughs> I'm telling you, because they're always watching people live, if you're outside for real. I'm telling you, 200 fans, but one of them is a killer inside the apps so so his app so his apps probably his friends too just 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 let you know so he can watch his shit so you know so they can plot on him all kind of shit do you your friend like so if somebody got 15,000 follower 100,000 or 15,000 follower probably 2,000 one of uh, is a hater I'm telling you not all of them gonna be Cool with you, Cubby. Follow. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The streets had his full attention. I'm not, I wasn't really the rapper. It was really the rapper right here. <laughs> However, the atmosphere of New York's music scene was quickly changing. Before this, auto tune melodic rappers like A Boogie and Lil TJ had been setting the tone. But 2018 saw the rise of Brooklyn drill rappers who began using UK drill beats, giving a whole new sound that quickly took over the city. New drill rappers were popping up all over Brooklyn, while the Bronx was struggling to get anywhere close to that kind of recognition. But that was a really black. In 2019, B-Love came home from his sentence, and upon his return, Dougie B convinced him and K-Flock to start rapping seriously. But things were only getting more complicated in the streets. At this point, their friend PMVJ started repping a new set, and Dougie B and others were upset about that. What is your reason why you don't it. like me? Why, bro? You used to stay on me. I used to take care of you all that. Tell me why you don't like me, bro. He's a big I don't care about you. One day, PMVJ was back in Sefside visiting his family when Dougie B and a friend pulled up, allegedly asking PMVJ's mom if he was home. She, unknowing of the beef, told them that he was upstairs if they wanted to hang out. This would ultimately lead up to Dougie B taking the chain off of his neck and recording the entire incident. Yeah, K-Flock, of course, would side with Dougie B, and the rest was history. Because of this, though, Dougie B would actually spend some time in jail for the robbery. With Dougie gone, B-Love and K-Flock were still in the streets looking for a way out. But for an undisclosed reason due to being a minor, K-Flock was then also put into a juvenile detention center for a short period of time. With B-Love the only one still holding on to his freedom, he began freestyling over drill beats until K-Flock came home. When Flocka was released, B-Love sat him down and told him he should really give rapping his full attention, and within time he booked a studio session for him where he recorded his first track. On May 26, 2020, K-Flock dropped that song, which was titled FTO, a remix to 22G's Blicky Freestyle. The song amassed over 100,000 views due to the hype K-Flock had already been building in the streets, and now everyone wanted to hear him rap. 22G's even ended up giving him props for the remix, a huge success for his first song. One month went by and B-Love dropped his first official song as well, No Hook, which also saw about the same success. They now had a platform to grow off of and put the Bronx drill movement on the map. Dropping music at least once a month and collabing on many of them, their names were quickly becoming the talk of the city. 
They also made sure to shout out Dougie B in verses while he was still locked away, so his past music was also getting recognized and gave him a small buzz for when he got out. But with all the attention they were now getting, it was also putting an even larger target on their backs. Every song became more specific, targeting different ops, but this is also what made it so popular in the first place. They made it a point to help each other stay on track and no matter what was happening in the streets, they had to keep recording music if they were going to make it out. Dougie B was released around August of 2020, and when he saw the momentum B-Love and K-Flock had built up, he quickly rejoined the mix. This is when things would really start to take off, kind of like a trio except they all had their own individual careers. In March of 2021, the three of them dropped their song, Brotherly Love. The first month it was out, it got mm. over a million- That Brotherly Love song, that shit was fire. Shit. And views and really put them on the map. I feel like a famous rapper from college. <laughs> People from outside the city were now tuning in and their fan base grew a lot after this. A big reason the music was catching on was because they didn't just copy the <laughs> My son in the interview have an air <laughs> That's crazy. Drill sound that Brooklyn was seeing success with. But rather they put their own twist. If I have an air pad on, I could not hear nothing. I would not hear anything. But I don't know. Even though it's, the music is on or not, I would not hear nothing because the air pad is inside my ear. I oh, don't know. I think I'm deaf for something. It's on it, making it an entirely new sound. I think I'm deaf for something. <laughs> now, though other Bronx rappers were getting views too, it was really these three who took it to that next level. From here forward, their songs were easily gathering millions of views every time. But make no mistake, they were still in the middle of a war. Things between Sevside, the YGs, and OGs was heating up, and the music was only adding fuel to the fire for all sides. Unlike most gangs that you've heard about in the past, the ones doing the most damage here in the Bronx were actually kids from the ages of 12 to 18. That's crazy. These kids 12. are younger and wilder than anything you could imagine, yep. and they're pulling triggers. During this time, K-Flock was having beef with his own cousin and rapper D-Thing, just because he was repping a different set, and that just shows how serious they took it. It's no more free Dougie B. But it's gonna be a ah. Then there was another situation with rapper Edot, who at one point was friends with K as well. After an Instagram live showed Edot smoking and chilling with K Flock's ops, their friendship was over as well. 16 with 2 million views. They never do that before. All my ops, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'll be for old, great. All the, nah, they not even my ops. I'm smacked. I'm high, y'all. Yeah, they not my ops. Fans. At this point, it seemed like everybody had a problem with everybody. But again, every single one of them was benefiting from these beefs. Bronx Drill had everybody tuned in. But at what cost? In July, a 21-year-old rapper named Ty Swish was shot in the head while outside of his apartment complex. Shit. Two days later, a 13-year-old named Jerrion was chased down and shot outside of a cafe in Belmont. Yeah, Joe, it was a shooting that left a 13-year-old dead and parents of teenagers here horrified that someone could do this. The NYPD tonight is asking for anyone with information to help them find the killer. It's not confirmed, but it's rumored that this was probably retaliation for Ty Swish's death from just a few days before. On July 11th, another 16-year-old rapper named Raw G's was getting into an Uber headed to a studio session. Two kids on scooters rolled up from behind him and shot him. Raw G's had been mocking the death of Jerrion on social media just an hour before. Around 11.30 Sunday night by the corner of East 178th Street Damn. and Webster Avenue in the Bronx, police say two men pulled scooters up next to a cab Medrano was taking to a recording studio. They then shot him in his head and chest, killing him. A perpetual cycle of dissing and then death was happening. But while this war was brewing between everyone, K-Flock, Dougie B, and B-Love were on the brink of going mainstream. Something they had been risking their lives for in an attempt to make it out was finally about to pay off. Shortly after, K-Flock dropped his song Being Honest and he would get his first collab from a mainstream artist when G Herbo gave him a verse. Following suit, Lil TJ and Fabio Foreign would also collab with him on the song In The Mood. Now he was getting radio play on Hot 97, and together with B-Love, he walked onto his first major show at Rolling Loud. K-Flock, B-Love, and Dougie B would all sign record deals shortly after, with K-Flock's rumored to have been worth a few million dollars. Now they had the money and freedom they had been working hard for, but it's a double-edged sword. The dissing and gang lifestyle was partially the reason they became so popular, so it's hard to just leave that behind at this point. 
But with money in his pockets, he was seen enjoying the finer things in life, taking trips to Miami, riding around in a new BMW, and spoiling his little sister and girlfriend with shopping trips. But the money and fame <laughs> only made him an even larger target for his ops, which means he now had to think twice before doing anything in his home city. And you better believe they were watching his every move. The morning of December 16th, K-Flock woke up and was seen on live, once again taunting his enemies to come find him. But he made sure to let him know he wasn't lacking as he revealed a gun tucked in his belt. Hours later, he was walking down Amsterdam Avenue and 151st Street. A shiesty covered most of his face, but a $1,500 Montclair jacket, unreleased Air Jordans, and a $1,400 pair of Amiri jeans. Unreleased Air Jordan. Damn. <laughs> Son got money! This may have still gave his identity away. As he passed by a barber shop, surveillance shows Oscar Hernandez come storming out to confront K Flock. Mm. Although he walks out of sight of the cameras for a second, we can assume threats right were here. being made on both ends. After Oscar turned his back to walk away, K Flock pulled the gun from under his jacket and shot him twice, in the neck and back. Oscar would die later in the hospital while K Flock quickly fled the scene. Hernandez was inside a barbershop when the gunman opened the door and asked him, quote, what are you looking at? And the victim went outside to confront him. He was fatally struck in the neck and the back. He because he was so easy to identify and investigators had access to surveillance from multiple angles, a warrant was issued only six days later. But the police identify and investigators had access to surveillance from multiple angles, a warrant was issued only six days later. But the police wouldn't need to look for him. On December 23rd, Kay hired a well-known lawyer named Scott Lehman to represent him. They drove together to the 30th precinct where he surrendered himself. In this statement, his lawyer describes that police had received a tip that Kay Flock wasn't actually the shooter in the surveillance footage, but that was quickly shut down. He was denied bond and waited behind bars while more evidence was collected by the police. Then in March, out of nowhere, Kay would fire his old lawyer and hire the same lawyer who represented El Chapo, a promising sign. In this Instagram post, his new lawyer stated that he was excited to work with K-Flock and was confident he would beat this trial. Son, fire. That's a boss. That's a boss shit. Fire you and hire El Chapo uh, lawyer. No. <laughs> oh boy, that's I got the money. So he did take, he did shoot him in self-defense. That's what the allegation is. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the details of the case, okay. but the government claims that he pulled the gun out and shot him. But at the same time, the person that was dead on the ground had his hand on a loaded weapon, illegal loaded weapon. k -Flock then posted several updated photos with the that caption thing, reading, All good, don't believe the blogs or internet. Everything trendy, forever DOA. Over the summer of 2022, his attorney began to argue self-defense, claiming Kay had no intentions Damn. or premeditation to murder Oscar, but instead feared for his life. Just inside, After all, man, he was in out. a dangerous part of town, and he was the one who was confronted in this situation. Social media had been supporting free K-Flock, and many believed him to be released sooner than later, but his court appearances were being postponed one after another. In November of 2022, fans tuning in would explode when the courts made an error showing his next court date to take place in December of 2028, leaving many to wonder if this was a mistake. But shortly after, the next court appearance was updated and corrected, this time set for November 16th, but even that would be delayed once again. The only what? update the world would get was a recorded phone call of K-Flock dropping bars saying he felt confident he would be home in 2023. His next appearance was set for February 2023, and those tuned into the drill scene were patiently awaiting for the return of the Bronx's biggest drill artist. Instead, what fans and K-Flock would get would be a wake-up call that no one could see coming. Early on the morning of February 23rd, before Kay was set to appear in court, the federal government would release a 15-page indictment on him and seven others of the gang's Sev side under the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, or RICO charges. And these are very serious accusations. Normally the evidence behind RICO charges go back many years, but in Kay Flock and Sev side's case, it was only two years worth of evidence, leaving many to believe this was rushed in a desperate attempt to keep Kay Flock away and locked up. Regardless, the government had gathered enough evidence against him and his entire gang, wanting to make an example out of all of them due to New York having some of the strictest sentencing and the image to uphold. New York wasn't taking a liking to the image that K-Flock and his music were giving the city, 
After all, this is the home of the stock exchange and some of the wealthiest people in the country. The last thing they want is kids glorifying murders deep. in their city. New York City? Image that Kate Flock and his music were giving this. It's like a Black Friday shit. City. After all, this is the home of the stock exchange and some of the wealthiest people. It's like when you're buying shoes. New York wasn't taken. When, when you online buying shoes, like Pear Jordan, when, when Jordan release, the new Pear Jordan release, you gotta stay online. And get the shoes. That's a lot of deep people, man. That's deep. <laughs> Damn. Taking a liking to the image Some that Chief Flock and his music were giving the city. After all, this is the home of the stock exchange and some of the wealthiest uh, people in the God. country. The last thing they want is kids glorifying murders in their city. New York City, they're not waiting for that. You're not going to make the city where e-commerce and the stock market lives look like a crime infested haven to the rest of the world and when you're now a rapper and you're going on live to say hey i have a gun and i'm chasing it down you're not gonna do it in new york city you can do this in chicago you could do this in houston you could do this in miami you will never in life do this in new york city now it suddenly made sense why kfox court date was being delayed Laughing. what most initially thought would be no more than a few years quickly turned into a minimum life sentence with the maximum being the death penalty Neither Kay or his defense have responded as of now. Only a few recent photos of prison where Kay is seen here. Police are now gathering all seven indicted members and Kay Flock's life hangs in the middle. He wanted to be the one who made the change for everyone around him, but at just 19 years old, he may have already lost the chance of being a free man. I just want my whole hood to be on. I'm gonna be the nigga that makes the change for everybody. Well, freak it flat, man. But I don't know. I hope they don't give him death penalty. I hope not. Or life sentence. Only God know, man. Only God know. But, damn. It's like still up it even his, his own fashion shit. That's crazy. Take K. Who happened to take it too? I need to see that. Anyway, man. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody know. And I'm out. And like my shit too. Peace.